Hello, my name is Atena Comar. We are going to be learning today to be doing four-leaf clovers. If you have any questions about this uh, project that I'm doing, uh, please visit me online at treasuresbyatena.com or look me up on Facebook. It's Atena Comar. Um, I have a fan page there where you can ask questions and share your projects and share your ideas. Um, this is a fun project to do because it only takes probably about 45 minutes to make a single four-leaf clover. You can have a lot of different green colors to make them out of. There's lots of greens available on the market. Um, and even if you don't want green, you can go with different colors, whatever makes you happy. Uh, four-leaf clovers are a symbol of good luck. Um, they're also very popular on St. Patrick's Day, but they're also popular any time you need luck. Um, so it makes a great gift for graduation or weddings or, or for people who are starting new patterns or new paths in their lives. So I, that's why I like them and that's why I want to share this with you. Uh, please visit me online. My name is Atena Komar, K-O-M-A-R. And um, my website is Treasures by Atena. Atena is spelled A-T-E-N-A. -E so it's treasuresbyatena.com. I'll see you there, and we'll enjoy this project. Let's get started. Okay, I have to move my camera a little bit so that you get a better angle and I can work here. So. Here's how we're going to start our four-leaf clover. Uh, we are going to build our four-leaf clover by doing one petal at a time. We're going to start with picking up four of the seed beads right here. Pull the thread through to the end and just tie that off. You want a little bit of a tail at the end so that you have room to tie later. Um, it doesn't have to be as long as you would normally need it because you're not going to need to get, bury a clasp or attach anything additional to this since we're just doing the four leaf clovers. Okay, when you have your beads tied off like this, what you do is put it down here. You tie off or you go back through the bottom so that you're coming out the top here. You don't want to start with your thread in the middle. If you pull it tight a little bit, it hides the knot inside the beads so you don't see it. So we'll pick up two more beads. We're going to go through the middle one more time. Go back in through the bottom. Just make a nice little loop. This is a standard square stitch or box stitch. I don't remember which they call it, but I know how to do it. That's the important thing. So go back in through the bottom and back out. So what we want is a row of four. And we're going to end by going one more time in through the bottom here and out through the top and pull tight. So we have a row of one, two, three, four, twos. Now we're going to pick up more beads. We're going to get three beads. And we're going to loop our thread through the center. See how these, there's three lines going between the four rows of beads. So we're going to go for the center one. One, two. And go under that and just catch the thread. And go back up. Pick up three more beads. And we're going to do go down the end piece of your two beads here. One, two. So we're coming out the other end. So now this doesn't look like much yet, but what we're actually formed is the top of the leaf. The four leaf clovers have a heart-shaped leaf on them, and I like to try to reflect that whenever possible. Um, I like to make my blooms as close to nature as possible, unless, of course, I'm making them wildly different. Okay, so now that we have that, we basically need to count down to bring this to a taper, do three, two, and one beads. So we'll need three more rows. We're going to start with two beads. And we're going to catch this middle line just like before, except we have, we're on the other side and we've got two beads. 
go back up through this one. This is your standard brick, brick stitch. If we go back in through the bead, we just thread it. There we go. To make uh, this more solid, you need to make sure you're pulling your thread tight. And we're going to go back through one here. Go back through the underside of the first bead coming out through the top of it, right here, and we pull it tight. So try to keep your tail out of the way. It's always a good idea to keep your tail out of the way, no matter what you're doing. <laughs> One more bead. We're going to catch this under thread here. Go back up from the underside of that bead right here, go back out, and back up. There we go. We grab two beads. We're going to have two beads, and we're going to, now there's only two gaps between the three rows of beads, so we go into the further gap, catch the thread under there, go back up through the underside, down, the first bead and back up to the second bead. This helps them lie down flat. There you go. So we only have one bead left and that's this one right here. This is going to be your corner bead. So you grab that bead and go back in through your the bead you just came out. So we're basically making a loop. And unlike the other bead, this bead will stay horizontal to the other ones. These are all facing up. This one's going to lie on its side. I'm going to go to the other side of the shape here. And this makes it feel a lot more solid if you just loop it through once more. And go, continue to go to the top of your original four column. Now your thread is right here, so this is where we're making our way back into where the thread is coming out, right here. And we're going to tie off this leaf. And we do the same procedure for all four leaves. If you're doing a three-leaf clover um, or a shamrock, a traditional shamrock, then you don't need to have four leaves. You would just need three. Um, but we're doing a four-leaf clover because we need all the luck we can get. Here we go. We make our way back to our original thread. And we tie this off just with a regular square knot. Tie pull tight. There we go. So we have our first leaf. Now I'll repeat this three times. I like to hide my thread a little bit, so I go back down through the following bead. There we go. Pull tight. And if you pull tight, it usually pulls the knot into that bead. And I like to do that because it looks so much better that way. Here we go. And just weave it through so that it's not too close to your loop. And cut the threads off completely. I use my thread zapper to cut the threads off. Uh, this way it melts the end of the threads so they don't fray later on and don't untie the loop. And I can tie much closer to the loop. See? It's very gentle on the thread. And you don't have to worry about getting into tight spaces. There we go. We'll just pull the thread zapper. Be careful when working with this tool because it does burn. It's hot. That's it. Then you repeat the process for the other three leaves. Um, on your last leaf, you do not cut your threads. You leave your threads open. So we're going to start another one. And we're going to start another one after that.